Another topic on vectors that's important to know is vector operations. And vector operations are basically vector addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So again, this should be basic review from physics. So starting off with an example here, let's say we have two vectors, vector A and B, and we want to add them together. In this case, each letter represents the magnitude or the length of the vector, and so each of them have different magnitudes. And here we can also see that they point in different directions. And so how can we add them if they both have different magnitudes and directions? One way of doing this is by using the parallelogram law. This law is useful because it accounts for both the magnitudes and directions of the vectors. And so in order to find the resultant vector, the first step, according to the parallelogram law, is to join the tails of the components, just like so. And next, starting from the head of B, we want to draw a line across and parallel to A. And we want to do another one, starting from the tail of A, parallel to B. And so as you can see, we create a parallelogram after the two lines intersect. And the last step is to simply draw a line from the tails of the vectors all the way to that point of intersection, just like that. And we can call this vector r, which is the resultant vector. And hence, a plus b equals r. Another way in which we could add these two vectors is by using the triangle law. And so with the triangle law, we're basically gonna form a triangle with the vectors this time. And so from the head of vector A, we're going to draw vector B going downwards, just like so. And as you can see here, the vectors continue to have the same directions. And now for the resultant vector, we can go ahead and draw a dotted line starting from the tail of A all the way to the head of B. And I'll just call that R. So again, A plus B equals R. Now another case for adding vectors could be when they are collinear, which basically means that they have the same line of action or point in the same direction. So for example, if we have vector A and then in front of it we have vector B and here both of them point to the right, then the resultant vector or A plus B is simply going to be R, which is the length of A and B summed up together as shown. So as you can probably tell, the collinear is the simplest case for adding vectors. Now moving on to vector subtraction, which is similar to vector addition. Let's say you have a vector b. The negative of that vector, or negative b, is going to be that vector pointing in the opposite direction. So pretty much flipped, as shown. So whenever you multiply a vector by a negative scalar, for example negative 1, then the direction of that vector is going to change. So now let's say we want to perform the operation a minus b. With vector subtraction, the resultant of the difference between a and b is basically going to be a plus negative b. So a plus negative b equals r. From this, an important thing to note here is that vector addition rules still apply, since this is considered a special case of addition. So now to see this visually, here we have vector A, and it's pointing upwards at an angle. And below it is vector B, which is pointing directly straight. So since the vector addition rules still apply, we can go ahead and use the parallelogram law to perform this operation. So here we have vector A, and now we draw negative B, so again, since it's negative, it points in the opposite direction, as shown. And now we go ahead and draw the parallelogram. And the resultant vector. And that right there is a visual representation of A minus B. Then of course, we can also go ahead and use the triangle law. Here's vector A, and now on top, negative B, and then here, the resultant vector is simply going to go from the tail of vector A 
to the head of vector b, and that is both the parallelogram law and the triangle law for vector subtraction. And now moving on to the last group of vector operations, which is multiplication and division by a scalar. One rule for vector multiplication is that if a vector is multiplied by a positive scalar, its magnitude is increased by that amount. So for example, if you multiply a vector by 2, then its magnitude increases by 2. It is also important to know that multiplying a vector by a negative scalar changes the direction of the vector. So again, to see this from a visual sense, let's say we want to multiply vector a by 2. So here we have vector a multiplied by 2. That's going to equal a vector that is twice as long in magnitude, which is simply 2a. And now for another example, let's say we want to multiply vector a by negative 0.5. Here we're dealing with a negative number, so there's going to be a change in direction. And just to help you visualize this better, I'm going to go ahead and write down that this is the vector portion, the vector a, and this is our scalar, negative 0.5. And also for the previous example, our scalar is 2, vector is a. So this is equal to negative 0.5a. And since it's negative, it's now in the downward sense or direction. And also the resultant vector is 0.5 times smaller than the original. And so that concludes vector operations.